All right, so the stream started. Just going to double check everything's working OK, especially since I'm doing a different setup. Alright, it looks like I'm live. Um, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> because I'm only doing an hour, I'm probably just gonna jump right into it. Um, so for this week, I'm going to be doing um, a new animal every day, um, chosen by you guys. You guys picked the first one already. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go through my process for um, learning how to draw something new. Um, <laughs> what you can kind of see from the stream is um, I pretty much just do a warm up. Um, then I use some reference photos um, and I draw from that to kind of learn whatever it is I'm drawing. Um, and then I start drawing with that reference to see how much of that is actually like seeped in. Um, then it's just a kind of uh, a, a cycle of um, bringing back up the reference, um, looking at my drawing and fixing the problems that I see, and then drawing a new picture um, and just kind of going back and forth between uh, um, you know, trying to do stuff just from my brain and then correcting all the mistakes that I make. Um, just through a lot of what I've read and, and experienced, that's kind of been like the best way to um, to really learn something is to make mistakes and then fix those mistakes. Um, so that's kind of the, the whole idea behind yeah what I'm doing here. And animals are always fun to draw, and I've done a lot of them before. Um, so I do have a bit of like domain knowledge that I can draw from. Um, but yeah, it's just a fun subject to, to work on. And the art wolf seems pretty cool. So <clears throat> I'm actually just gonna kind of set a timer for myself for like five minutes. And I literally just kind of like draw like circles and lines and stuff to, uh, <laughs> to warm up. I'm working with a different setup today. Um, different tablet, different computer. Um, I don't feel like altogether comfortable, but that's all right. That's part of what the warm up is too. It's just getting comfortable. So yeah, whenever I'm kind of warming up, it really is just like, it's kind of a lot of like just exercises that I've, um, the ones I'm doing right now are exercises from drawabox.com. Um, yeah, just, just really kind of, I focus my warm-ups around control, um, especially when I'm like working digitally. It's just really easy to kind of like feel like my hands going all over the place and I don't have very much control. I'm gonna say I'm on paper when I first start, so it's good to take just like five minutes or so and I really work on just getting things down. So right here, that's why I'm like plotting two points out, I'm trying to just draw between them, um, and then just draw over that over and over again. <clears throat> so I don't know how accurate my Twitch things is. My Twitch dashboard is or whatever, but um, I see someone's here. At least one person's here. So um, just to recap, I'm kind of just doing a brief little warm up just to make sure I'm kind of comfortable, and then I'm going to jump into the animal drawing. And yeah, warm up's just a lot of lines, a lot of circles. Just a lot of, you know, just getting comfortable. 
There's been many times when I try to just jump right into drawing without warming up, and it, it just never works. I always just my lines are just kind of all all over the place. Oh, lemon lightning, hello, and Valley Design, hello. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for the kind of words, Galley. Yeah, this is definitely a new thing for me. I'm doing like just kind of drawing and sketching and stuff. But uh, yeah, I think this would be kind of a good experience for me and hopefully good information for you guys. Um, I think it's really important to know how to um, just like learn, like how to properly study stuff. Um, and that's kind of what this this series this week is about. Is um, yeah, what's the best way to learn like a new subject? Um, and we just picked animals because animals are super fun to draw. Um, and there's a lot of, there's always stuff to improve in, uh, so you never really get to a point where you're like, oh yeah, I can draw everything now. Uh, yeah. And also for music today, um, I'm using the Twitch music library. Um, I noticed one of like my pre, like my previous recordings, um, some of it got muted because, um, yeah, some of it got muted because I guess copyright stuff, because I was just playing stuff on Spotify. But now I found that Twitch has its own library of music where I don't have to worry about that. So um, we've got this fun like video game music. Birdie Nam Nam. Oh, thanks. Yeah, if, and, and for all you guys, like if you have any questions at any point about anything, I'm going to try and, uh, you know, think out loud here for the whole process. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and, and ask me have any questions about anything. Uh, so like I said, I kind of set a timer for myself for five minutes. It's almost up. And that's just going to be kind of my like warm up. Um, I'm not the most comfortable doing like uh, digital like tablet stuff. Um, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, I can just always continue to like rearrange stuff. And like a really important focus about what I'm doing right now, which is just like studies, um, is that like if this is all about learning and not about making great stuff. So like you're not going to see any like blow you away animal drawings today. Um, you're going to kind of see my process of learning how to do that. Um, and it's really important to like make a distinction between um, like making really pretty drawings and actually like just drawing for the sake of learning. Um, Drawing for the sake of learning often is really messy, and that's what we're doing. Um, Birdie, I draw, um, I do at the very least like 30 minutes a day of like very focused, dedicated drawing, um, kind of like what you're gonna be seeing here. So I'll pick a subject, usually I pick a subject for each week, and then I'll kind of focus on that with my daily drawing period. Um, outside of that, though, like a lot of my work um, has drawing too, and um, also, I like to do like, you know, mindless doodling, that kind of stuff. So I'll say like, yeah, depending on the day, anywhere from 30 to 30 minutes to like five or six hours. Like, <laughs> I mean, it really depends on what I'm doing. Um, but usually I just, yeah, I make sure at least I do like very focused um, improvement based drawings, like what we're doing right now. Um, at least some of that because it can, it can sometimes, like, if you're just doodling and that's all you do, um, you don't really improve anywhere close as when you actually do focused um, practice on developing particular skills. Um, so that's why I make sure that I have at least some of that going on uh, each day. Hey, Tatiana. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say I am warmed up. I uh, definitely don't feel it, but... That's okay. Um, again, this isn't about making pretty drawings today. This is about um, learning how to draw the Arwolf, um, which is gonna, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit messy. Um, so I went ahead and I got some <clears throat> some reference here. Um, so what you can kind of see from the stream, like I know in the top bottom left, I have like my process here. Um, so see the first thing I want to do is draw with reference. Um, Thanks, Tatiana. Yeah, this is like Twitch's music library. Um, so this is copyright free, so none of my videos will get muted anymore. <laughs> um, uh, so, yep, yeah, so I am going to 
yeah, I'm just gonna kind of use like the reference here to kind of just start to try to understand this, uh, the, the just how this animal, which is kind of like a hyena, um, is it's is put together really. <laughs> Daddy, I know, um, I did look, and there is like a whole library of like metal music in their thing. So, um, maybe not Rage Against the Machine, but you can get some sort of Rage in. So something that I've kind of learned um, is that there's like this, this kind of like primary shape to like most, not all, but most animals. Um, and it kind of looks like that. You kind of get like the rib cage, and then like the I guess the was like pelvis, and then the head, and it kind of looks like this little like worm thing, and then from there you kind of add on the the different legs and arms and stuff. So I try to kind of start with a similar, just keeping that in mind. Um, so for like the art wolf here, you can see that, yeah, like so here would be uh, the chest, and then he has his kind of arms come here, um, a lot of dog and dog-like animals um, in their front legs, the elbow uh, meets right where the, the chest is, and you can see that with the art wolf too. Um, and one of the kind of defining characteristics, I think, of this animal is just like, yes, it's kind of long slender legs, especially around the feet, they really taper. So that's something I'm going to kind of be keeping in mind. Um, and again, I'm not going for like accuracy or like beautiful drawings right now. Um, I am focusing on um, just understanding. He's like big bushy tail, which is kind of cool. So that's something I want to keep in mind. And that's one of the things that's really, I think, important to focus on when you're, yes, when you're learning new animals, but like when you're learning uh, anything really. Um, all right, Birdie, nice seeing you. Thanks for coming. And thank you, Tatiana. <laughs> um, so yeah, when I'm doing this, one of the things I'm really paying attention to are like what are like the key characteristics of this animal. Like what is the thing that you see that you're like, oh yeah, that's an arbor, or that's a you know that's a cow, or whatever it is. Um, and and for this one here, like you can definitely see that like this bushy tail is one of those things. Um, so I really want to pay attention to that. Um, the stripe pattern is also quite important. Um, so I'm going to be, you know, focusing on that as well. Um, yeah, and just trying to really figure out what makes this animal this animal. Um, another thing would be in the head here. Um, kind of has this like. It looks like quite thick neck um, with a small head, especially you can see from like this reference here. Um, it almost looks like his head is like smaller than his neck from some angles. So I really want to remember that because again, after I do some of this drawing from reference, I'm going to be jumping. I'm going to be trying to uh, draw it again with no reference. Um, and so I kind of have to really. Yeah, learn the animal <laughs> so that I can do that. And then obviously I'm going to mess up a bunch once I do that because I have like no information, um, but that's okay. Um, so I really kind of noticed that he has this like, yeah, almost like raccoony sort of like mask sort of thing around his eyes. It makes it look like he has like, a big, I don't know, a big like eyebrow ridge or something. 
Um, and I can again see from this one here that he has a very like flat top to his head, it seems. And these big ears, that's going to be important too for like the design of the animal. jump over some of these other. So I do have a little bit more focus here on um, on like his face. Um, and one of the things like reasons I got like this picture here is because looking it up, um, the the art wolf like pretty much just eats a lot of like termites and it has this like long sticky tongue. You can kind of see like all these little dots on it. Um, so that's for kind of uh, yeah for eating. I think it's like it eats like a quarter of a million termites a day or something crazy thing like that. Um, so I really wanted to remember that in, in, in knowing like what are key characteristics of this animal. Um, the tongue is definitely one of those, so it might be fun to do like drawings um, focusing on that tongue. Especially if I was like turning this into a character, um, that'd be really good stuff to know. I'm kind of digging this music. <laughs> um, here I have a skeleton of, um, this is actually a hyena, because um, they're quite related. Um, apparently this is more related to hyenas than it is to wolves. Um, but, um, so I'm kind of using, because I couldn't find like an art wolf skeleton that I thought was actually real. Um, so this is kind of my reference. Um, because it's quite helpful to know how the bones kind of fit in there. Um, the, the the thing I just need to keep in mind is that hyenas are very like big in the chest, like very um, front heavy or top heavy, whereas the wolves are really slender. Um, so I just gotta make sure that I'm not building out this big chested thing. It's, this one's a lot more. Yeah, this thing isn't really like a fighter like hyenas are. Yeah, like kind of like fighting. Um, they have like these big, big chest muscles and stuff, so they can kind of hold down their prey and um, that sort of thing. Um, the art wolves, yeah, they just eat bugs, so they don't really need all this like um, pinning power, and, and they need to be a lot more like sleek so they can run away um, from predators and stuff. So I should probably do this other leg here. Just a little sloppy. So again, I'm trying to make something pretty. <laughs> um, kind of a cool thing about like if you're drawing uh, animals, um, it's if you're, if you're kind of making a pose for them. Um, keep their legs in different positions like this, like how this one's back here, this one's there, um, rather than having them line up. Um, it just makes it more interesting. Um, how you can see in this guy here, like you can't really see the back leg too well. Um, so even though I was kind of working with this pose, I just bringing this leg forward a bit, it just kind of staggered things and made it a bit more uh, interesting. Um, lemon, I'm not thinking so much about vector right now, um, but what I'm doing will lend really nicely to that. Um, because, especially doing like vector illustration, like um, everything's like super, super like basic shapes, uh, very minimal. And so what this process is kind of doing is having me understand like what are the basic shapes that make this up. Um, so like even just like I don't know, hard just to kind of, let's see, it's a different color here. Ah. Yeah, if I were to like go and draw over one of these drawings here, um, I can see that like, 
that's not a good color. Yellow maybe. Cool. So I can kind of see that like if I kind of break down the animal as if like it's really basic shapes, like oh this is kind of like a cylinder for the body, that kind of goes up into like another cylinder. The head is like a kind of squashed, uh, squashed like sphere. Another kind of sphere there. We got like triangles for ears. So like by kind of focusing on the animal like this, that would really work well for, um, yeah, like vector illustration or very minimal design. Um, and that and that works too when you're doing like, uh, when you're doing like digital like painting or anything really. Like if you can understand it at its core, like um, makeup, like this, it really helps when you're trying to like invent things and make stuff out of your brain. Um, if I know like the basic shapes. If, like, if I can look at this animal and be like, oh, it's just a bunch of cylinders and spheres and stuff, um, it's a lot easier for me to move those shapes around and, and pose it exactly how I want it, just as basic shapes. And then from there, I can add as much detail as I want, or I can keep it minimal, um, whatever works. But I would say that the key um, point of what the exercise I'm doing right now is kind of building my uh, visual library. So like just learning how more things work. Um, and that's just gonna kind of play a role in all the drawing that I do, whether it's vector, whether it's um, painting, doodling, all that stuff is gonna benefit from me just understanding how to draw more things. So I think at this point, um, I am going to get rid of my reference. Um, and rid of my drawing, and now I'm gonna try and do a new drawing. Oh yeah, you're you're very welcome, Lemon. Um, so now I'm gonna try and do uh, a drawing of an artwork again, but this time I'm just going off what I've just learned in the past like 15 minutes. Um, so not a whole lot, but yeah, this is the point of it. Is the, the the point is kind of to mess up. Um, and then fix my problems, and in that, I will uh, I will learn. So again, it's kind of like really, um, it's, it's kind of. So again, I'm gonna kind of put in that like that main shape that I usually use. Um, here. When I recall, the legs are probably about like the leg, so the, it, the knee starts right there around. Oh wait, on the hind leg, it's a bit lower, so that's where the knee is, so kind of. Like, I feel like it's time to tell you, like, once again, say it, like, don't expect something amazing. <laughs> but that's also something I kind of wanted to show, too, is, like, like, I'm going to mess up. And that's kind of the intention. Um, kind of, like, having him stretch out his back legs here. Big bushy tail. Kind of reminded me of like a raccoon. Or, like it actually kind of reminded me of like um, what's that Pokemon with the the paintbrush tail, like Smeargle. Um, so um, so yeah. Also, and this is also again where like some um, having drawn a lot of different kinds of animals before, I have some. Like foundational knowledge that really helps. Like I know that with things that are, you know, like this, like dogs and wolves and all that stuff. Um, and from what we kind of saw, like I know that um, th 
the, the waist is smaller and the chest is bigger. Um, not so much in this animal, um, but it still is the case. So, this, so there's always going to be this kind of like tapering um, of the chest in here. In fact, we're trying to get our dog to look a bit more like this right now. Uh, uh, what's she doing? She's doing pretty good. Try to remember too that this animal's very slender. Um, maybe like a fox is a good comparison. It has this kind of small head on this thick neck. So I'm gonna have it like looking this way, I think. I didn't do any drawings of like a profile shot, um, which I think would have been really helpful for me. Um, so maybe after, maybe that, that this might be this might be one of the things that I have to fix. I think it has a quite a little snub sort of mouth, like not a super long snout, um, just because it just uses like. It's tongues it seems to be like the main way that kind of reaches in and grabs like termites and stuff. Uh, so I don't think its nose is particularly long, but you know, I might be misremembering, so we'll see. I do remember it's had these big ears. Alrighty, I feel like this head is maybe something's off. Um, so I know there's gonna be some stuff to fix there. Which, you know, is good. I want things to fix. Um, that's how I learned. Um, and then I'm just gonna put in some stuff for the pattern. It wasn't like crazy amounts of stripes, like not like a zebra or anything. It seemed like it very bit every once in a while. I don't know how many were on the legs, that's something I'll have to check. So also like, um, when you have things like stripes and stuff in an animal, that's actually a pretty good opportunity to um, hint at like the form. Um, so actually I'm just gonna like so like the shape of this leg is kind of like, like um, just the kind of wrapping of it. So I can use these lines to add some three dimension to the leg um, by following the form. And the same with the body, like, see if I just took, um, like if this was like, again, talking about this being like a cylinder, like, that would kind of give you a sense of the shape. Um, so that's kind of the, the wrapping that I want to do on the surface of the body with those stripes. Um, that adds in a bit of more like, you know, 3D to it. And that's why it's really helpful when you're learning the animal or learning how to draw anything to like break it down into very, yeah very simple three-dimensional shapes. Also, I just need to mention that this music's awesome. <laughs> and yeah, so if you guys have any like questions about, you know, like I said, I'm trying to really like, think out loud here. Um, so, but if there's any questions about anything, um, yeah. So I think that's where I'm going to stop my first drawing. Um, and so now what I'm going to do is bring back up my reference um, and fix stuff. 
So I think the first thing I'm gonna go to is the head. So I'm just gonna duplicate this so I can kind of compare. Yeah, I don't have any really good profile shots, but it does seem like my snow even is coming out a bit further. I were to like redraw this, and so this this is uh, you know what I think is the most important part of the exercise is fixing the drawing. This is kind of like where. Um, yeah, by actually like fixing my mistakes, um, that's where they really kind of sink in. Um, it's one, like, I used to be in the habit of like, oh, I would point out everything that was wrong with it, but then when I come back to drawing it, I totally, or if I'm drawing that thing once again, I kind of forgot. Um, so I find that's really important to, uh, yeah, fix the mistakes. So the top of the head seems, yeah, I forgot it's quite flat. And then it kind of swoops down, and the nose is like there. It's kind of sick. Kind of separate it off. This part's all dark. Maybe I should be looking at my head. Yeah, I should probably bring this over to the actual like head ones. I also got a picture of a skull here, um, which can be quite helpful. Um, so just look at my skull. Like the the snout is actually a lot longer than I thought. As you can see that too with the the open mouth. These things have huge mouths. So, yeah, for me right now, I can say that um, this is definitely one of the harder parts for me is kind of doing this head. Um, so if I wanted to for like my next try, I could even just do like just a head study on its own um, to really kind of pinpoint that weakness. Maybe that's what I'll do. See how I do on the rest of this. Yeah, it's still not looking super bright to me. Um, this is where it could be nice to kind of take the time and, yeah, like I said, really kind of study the head. I think that's might be what I do next. Um, but let's just look at the rest of our drawing for now. I can already kind of compare it against that one. I guess it's a bit better. <laughs> so this is, uh, I can be a bit long, like this part here. What would happen if I just, like, put this down a bit? <laughs> This is a little. <laughs> Let's just try that. I think that's a bit better. So, so one thing I'm noticing right here is that his front leg here um, is way too thick. So like, look how like. It kind of starts out like big here, um, and then it just goes super narrow. And mine 
doesn't really do that. So, uh, that's what I'm going to work on here. So the narrow part, and this again, I guess this would come back to like learning how to, you know, do some basic shapes. So this is like, so totally like just a little cylinder. Um, so now kind of putting that back into my drawing. Um, and actually, oh, that's that's one thing I've actually noticed here is I have I have a bend in the legs, um, which you know of course I'm sure that happens. Um, but actually, one of the things with dogs and similar um, kinds of animals is that their uh, front limbs lock, like you're seeing here, and that kind of just gives them more support. Some more support, like that's kind of like what our knees do um, when we're standing. So in this kind of pose. Um, where he's really leaning forward, he would probably have his front legs locked um, to give him more stability. So what I'm going to do is kind of focus on... So he kind of has this big... Um, yeah, like muscly bit here around like the shoulder. Um, then I'm going to have it go straight down. Again, I'm going to kind of use that um, sort of cylinder shape that I just kind of sketched out. And then from there, it's going to... And then, whoops. And then this leg would probably be the same. Uh, So that seems a bit more realistic, a bit more like what the pose actually would look like. Um, which is good, it's great, that's what we want to do, we want to be fixing this stuff. Um, I think his, and then, so another thing I could point out here is that, um, I think I actually made him a bit too slender. Um, yeah. That and maybe a bit too long as well. Let's see what would happen if I put this in. I think it's more like that. Okay. So, these lines a bit. Um, so one thing you'll actually notice too is like I am not really focusing on, um, I'm not really focusing on the, um, like the actual like fur and hair, um, because that's, that's kind of some detail stuff. Like you can see like this is already kind of looking like the animal without me actually going in and like doing individual hairs. Um, and I think that's just like a really good process to drawing is to really focus on like, the big scale stuff first. Um, so what are the major shapes, how are they positioned, um, and then from there you can focus on details. Like even even the pattern that I'm doing here, I don't even need to focus on that at this point. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and yes, Lemon, uh, Photoshop is great for just <laughs> moving stuff around really easily to, to see how it would look. Um, very convenient. Um, and Anna, you know, there's always, you can always kind of rewatch the the part that you missed um and you know i think most importantly is like we're going to be doing this all week so um i'll be doing the same process every day um at the same time um, so another thing i'm kind of noticing here is that this leg is going way too far down like if i go back to my skeleton here you'll see that there's a bone here a bone there and then a group of bones there and then a little one there um, and actually, just for fun, um, if we were comparing this to ourselves, this is like our thigh bone, this would be our um, shin, and then this would be our foot, and then this would be our like uh, fingers here, like the, the pads of our palm and our fingers. Um, but if I were to kind of look at this, um, it looks like mine goes way too far down. Um, so like. Pretty much, if I was 
plotting out the bones. Um, like one there, one there. Right. Well, that one's a bit longer, so maybe like there, and then it would come down. So I need to shorten this leg. And also, like, I needed to taper, no, I taper a little bit more. Uh, and and look how, like, straight down this. Uh, I guess this is this is really like the foot of the animal compared to our foot. So like, the foot is like going straight down. So that's something I might want to take from my drawing. So I'm go straight down, and then that the paw here. Um, just as with the head, the paw is something I think that I would need to do some more study in, um, so I could do a very focused study on that if I wanted to. Uh, so that's what I mean by animals are really good, is because there's always, you know, more stuff to work on. Like, I'm, even, I'm not even focusing on color. Um, and now by comparison, this back leg is super long. Um, probably go to like here or something. Uh, another thing, another important thing to notice like the more you do this stuff, the better you can kind of spot the differences or spot the, the issues. It's not always easy to know what's going on um, and that's why it's really helpful to like have, you know, yeah, have some like, you know, friends that you can run stuff by, or like, uh, that's why we have like vector friends. It's a way to kind of, um, some people kind of come on and like, get feedback on, you know, what they need to work on. Um, and then over time, you get a bit better of an eye for these sorts of things. Uh, but even for me, like, I definitely need to, you know, there's a lot of people I could run this by, and they'll point out, you know, tons of problems I'm not even seeing. And actually, maybe you guys have some problems that I don't. Um, and in that case, like, let me know. Um, you know, I don't know everything. <laughs> yeah, Teddy and a vector friends. Uh, this is looking a bit too long. I would do some cheeky photoshopping again. Yeah, yeah so again, um, this is, you know, just kind of, um, doesn't have to be like super perfect, nice looking. The whole purpose of this drawing is to learn. So I can say like, I've learned a bunch from this so far. Um, this isn't something I'm gonna go like put on my portfolio or, or like show off everywhere. Like the whole purpose of this is just for me to improve. Um, and if something turns out looking kind of nice, that's kind of like a bonus. Um, and from here, if I wanted to, I could continue to refine this over and over again, and eventually um, I could have a nice drawing. Uh, but again, that's not what I'm focusing on. Um, ears should be further back on the head. Let's check, take a look. Especially if you compare with the hyena here. Um, I think you're pretty much, you're right. Um, yeah, I guess if we look at the skull, like the ears are gonna be like back here somewhere. Um, so usually there's like holes for the ears. So the ears might even be, no. Okay, but either way, I think you're right. I think we need to go further back with the ears. Um, yeah, the whole head's a little whack, I think. Um, but let's, let's do that and see how it looks. back there somewhere.
kind of like... Hmm. I guess it depends on the view, like... Some of them look like they're really opened up and high, and other times it looks like they're a little more off to the side. So often if I if I have like, um, I don't know, if I have like a project or something like that, you know, personal project, client project, whatever, and it involves drawing a particular thing or focus on a particular thing, like an animal, um, I don't know, like a machine or something, um, this would be a, this would be kind of how I start, um, is really familiarizing myself with whatever that subject matter is um, through a through process just like this, kind of. Drawing out from reference, trying to draw without reference, going through if there's some mistakes, um, doing research. You can kind of see, like, I did a, have a couple of notes down here um, just to find out, you know, the more you know about it, the more it kind of helps. It actually kind of really makes a difference in your drawing. Um, like I said, knowing that it kind of is shy, lifts and burrows, um, that it would run away rather than fight, usually. Um, this kind of reinforces like, oh, like this is kind of the personality that it would have, and this is how it might be posed, this is how, um, I'm not going to make it super bulky, like I said, like the hyena, I'm going to make it a lot, a lot more slender, like we're seeing here. Um, so yeah, all that stuff kind of helps. And so if I was doing a project, I would try to learn as much as possible. Um, and then that would help me for the final project. <laughs> Ted Anna, this is part nature documentary. <laughs> Dude, I am totally okay with that. Um, that's also why I picked animals, just because it kind of gives me a chance to, yeah, like research them some more. And, uh, yeah, I like animals. So sometimes you'll see me kind of do some like rapid wrapping lines, um, and again, that's just for my own understanding, not necessarily to make a nice drawing just so that I can better understand the form. So trying to remember like, okay, this is kind of like a cylinder. Uh, the neck is also kind of like a cylinder. And even like on the ear here, like you can put some wrapping lines around this to, cause this part's kind of a bit, uh, a bit rounded. So not all the lines I draw have to be for, and that's a, a, maybe a good distinction about doing a drawing, you know, final drawing versus a study or something, is um, not all the lines have to be like for visual appeal. Like a lot of these lines can be for my own understanding. It just kind of helps to like trace around shapes um, to really kind of get a feel for it. Tanya and I am not going to imitate David Attenborough. <laughs> You'd think I could do a British accent after living there, but, um, uh, nope. <laughs> So yeah, I see that the, the darkness in this tail starts a lot higher up than I had it. So I'm just going to kind of enforce that. Um, and yeah, so kind of like, actually not so much on the back legs. No, on both of them. Okay, so we kind of like, it gets darker down here. Um, the fur kind of stops, I guess, or the pattern changes. And a great way to kind of... <laughs> Think about this. Um, Melissa says this about our dog. It's like it's like they're wearing socks. So it's a good way to kind of remember, like, oh yeah, he's got little black socks on. <laughs>
Nadia and Havo, we just get you uh, to, to Skype in and you can narrate things as I'm doing this. <laughs> I think I'm gonna stop with this drawing here. Um, I can still see that like there's a lot for me to learn about drawing the head. And the ears don't still don't seem quite right to me. Um, I haven't even touched on like how the actual feet are constructed. Um, and yeah, there's still a lot to do with pattern, um, with color. If I even want to go that far, which I don't think I'll be doing. Um, but right now I, I can just kind of make them pair two drawings here. So uh, on the left here, um, yeah that was um, no reference. So we did like I don't know, 15 minutes of, of trying to learn how to draw an art wolf that we got rid of the reference, drew this one, um, and then brought back the reference and fixed it, turned it into this. Um, and hopefully you guys agree that this one looks more like it. <laughs> I think it does. Um, but that just shows the the, the reason behind um, fixing my drawing. Because um, I learned a whole bunch like about you know the construction of the face. The ears are still off but I learned some. I learned about the tail, the little socks, um, as well as just like making things the proper width and, and locking in these front legs. That's something I wasn't even thinking about. Um, but it looks so much more realistic now that his front legs are locked like that. Tadian, I take you as someone who does a lot of uh, impressions. <laughs> a lot of spot on impressions. Um, so we have about, I'm just going to save, um, we have about 10 minutes left. Well, 8 minutes left. Um, so. What I'm going to do, um, I'll just yeah, I'll do I'll do a really quick um, little study of the head. I'm just for my own sake because that's where I felt like the most problems I had, so I'd want to address that. Uh, yeah, the first one does look Pokemon-ish. You're you're right. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> I made a Pokemon. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna kind of do a quick little try to understand the head. Um, and actually I might even like... I might even just draw on top of the skull for that. So yeah, this will be a bit interesting I think. Messes in my there we go. song sounds like Kirby. Um, so also, so while I'm doing this next part too, um, I want you guys to give a think to what animal I should work on uh, tomorrow. So it's going to be the same time, um, same process, same everything, uh, just with a new animal. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll do, I'll do the same thing that I did when we voted for this one, which is, uh, the first animal to be said twice, um, that'll be the one. And twice by, you know, two different people. <laughs> so here I'm just going to try and get a sense for um, how the animal kind of looks. Um, like how the, the, the head, the pieces go onto the head. So actually this is where it's really helpful to have my hyena here. Uh, so I can see that the ears start all the way back here. So by comparing it to that, knowing that they're in the same family, this is probably a good guess, but the ears probably mount on here for this. Right like the back of the skull here. Um, and a lot of times in skulls you kind of see these little like ridges and like, like um, yeah, these little ridge pieces. That's usually where things latch on, like muscles and tendons and stuff. Um, so it would probably be a fair estimate that um, 
the ears kind of attach on in some way here. So I'm going to say this is kind of like here. size too. That's, that's important. So if I look at like the ear, it's kind of like the, the height of the head. So like the ear should be about like this size. So something like this actually I think would be pretty accurate. Um, I think really I need to get some more pictures. And obviously like the best thing to do with this sort of thing is like to get that animal in real life <laughs> or maybe something similar. So uh, my dog doesn't look much like this but might still not, might not be a bad idea to like yeah just like look at my dog and um, see exactly how her ears connect to her head um, and kind of feel around like, and it sounds a little weird but like feel around on the skull like where I think it's joined in. Um, or just go to a zoo or something. Uh, yeah, the, the closer you can get to like observing in real life, uh, the better. Because you just really get a sense for like the three dimensions of things when you do that. All right, so we have one vote for hedgehog. <laughs> I've never drawn a hedgehog, um, so that's a pretty good one. Computer's really hot. It's okay. It's okay. The computer almost done. Um, and so this is like the eye socket in here. Um, so there's going to be like a bunch of like, I don't know exactly what size it's going to be. I only know this for like people, but there's going to be like the eyeball and there's going to be like muscles like wrapping around it and stuff. Um, one of the things I can kind of notice with from this shot here is that like much like us um, the eyes are like front facing but sometimes like depending on the, the animal um, especially when you get to like, fish and stuff like you get eyes on the side of the head but um, I can see that they're front facing so I'm going to uh, um, kind of you know really try to get that Actually, yeah, it would be fun to do a study of the actual, the actual eyes too, because they're not like people eyes. Like they're similar, but they're different. Um, so that'd be kind of a cool thing to learn. Um, and then I think what's really cool about studying animals um, is that if you like me, like to make up a lot of like make up your own characters and creatures and that sort of thing, like you have all, like all this uh, knowledge that you can kind of throw in there. So if I learned really well how to draw these eyes. Then I could, you know, just when I'm playing around, I'm throw that to a character design. Um, and that's kind of like, you know, if you look at a lot of like really great like creature designers, um, so the one uh, woman that's done a lot for like uh, Star Wars, uh, Terrell Whitlatch, um, she just she just knows a lot, a lot of different kinds of animals and studies them intensely, and, and then she kind of uses that information to. Um, create new ones that are actually believable. Um, not just something you kind of pull out of your yeah, butt. So here I can kind of notice the nose. And this is something I've been meaning to work on too, is like, like just noses of animals and, and people too. That's something I neglect a lot. Um, I learned recently that um, that animals like dogs. I'm assuming it's for you know like these artwolves and stuff like that as well. But I know for dogs, they breathe in. Uh, they breathe in like front facing uh, through like these main holes right here. 
change the color. And then they exhale out the side. Uh, whereas we kind of do it from the same spot. Um, it's different for them, this kind of helps them like just circulate smells and store smells in a different way. So that if you have something like, yeah, a dog that's like, you know, uh, tracking a scent, it can kind of store the smell um, and still take in new ones. That and they have like, they're just way better at smelling than us. Like, they can pick up so many different nuances that, you know, our, our, our nose smeared animals are just like awful. Um, so it is, um, it's been an hour. So this was for, uh, yeah, from 10 to 11. It's 11 now. Um, but, you know, before I go, um, guess we got, so yeah, we got hedgehog and water deer. Um, anybody else wants to chime in? Um, otherwise, I'll just like flip a coin or something. Um, Yo, Lemon, is that true? If I concentrate, I don't even know how to breathe out of one nostril. <laughs> okay, that's really interesting, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, any final questions or animal suggestions? Um, I mean, I hope you guys like enjoyed this. Um, I know, like, I learned some stuff, so <laughs> I know I got some value. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, this is you know, to try and show you guys um, a good process for learning. Um, thank you for fact-checking, Lemon. <laughs> um, no, that's really cool. I didn't know that. Um, it's kind of weird to... I'm going to try and, like, pay attention to my brain, like, or, like, to my nose when I'm not paying attention to my nose. I want to see if I can pick up on it doing that. Maybe I'm the... I'm a 15%. This is both nostrils. <laughs> so advanced. <laughs> uh, let's pull back up. Yeah. Oh, another thing I did want to mention. Um, there is a total intentionality for me only making this an hour. Um, doing very um, focused. Oh, it's really. Oh, sorry. <laughs> doing very focused. Um, like, like um, improvement-based work, like stuff like this, where I'm really concentrating and trying to um, fix problems as I go, and, um, rather than just like mindless drawing or coloring or whatever. Um, it, it starts to lose um, effectiveness um, after an hour or so. Obviously, it depends. You know, it's different depending on how you're feeling that day, or, or um, you know. Maybe you're just different as a purpose, but it's yeah, <laughs> it's raining. <laughs> um, but as a general rule, um, between 30 and 60 minutes is a good amount of time to spend um, doing very deep work, like deep, like uh, concentrating work like this. Um, I mean, you can try and go more if you want, especially if you're really into it. Um, but just pay attention to that. Like, notice yourself um, after that hour and see if you still feel like you're retaining the same amount of information. Like even as I was doing this, this skull here, um, I was starting to drift off a bit. Um, and that's, you know, again, like news to me that, or like information for me that, okay, maybe, maybe it is time to end this. Um, yeah. So do small blocks of time. Um, if you have, you know, if you want to, if you want to do like four hours of study within a week, uh, don't do it all at once do an hour each day or do like an hour then a break then an hour um, or you know 30 minutes whatever you want like like I said at the beginning I do at least 30 minutes every morning uh, this is it for today um, and then if I'm up for it I might do some more but um, that's yeah it's important it also stops you from getting like super burnt out and not wanting to draw all together um, it's better to do like tons of small steps than do a couple big ones and then want to stop drawing <laughs> Uh, so nobody said anything um, we're looking between a hedgehog and a water deer um, let's see I got the dice here convenient so if I get an odd number it's going to be hedgehog if I get an even number 
it's going to be water deer. I don't even know what a water deer. Um, <laughs> Lemon, you're very welcome. So yeah. So what did I say? I said, odd is hedgehog, even is deer. Okay. Oops. Odd. Hedgehog. Sorry, Tatiana. <laughs> it has tusks. Well, I'll tell you what, Tatiana, if I think this is the second time you asked for it, so um, on Wednesday or, or, or tomorrow, um, yeah, on Wednesday we could probably do a water deer. Google it. All right, fine. Let's get some pictures of water deer before we go, just so we can see what we're not doing tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I know you guys can't see this, so I'm gonna... Um, find this. It looks really weird. So everybody, this is a water deer. We're not drawing it tomorrow. We're drawing a hedgehog. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks a little messed up. <laughs> it really just looks like a deer with tusks. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm going to end it. Um, so everybody, thanks for coming in. Um, I actually think this was like the top, the most attended one I've done so far, which is really cool. Um, so thanks for coming along and to the shop like yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, thanks for coming along. Uh, I hope you learned a bit about like practice and, and process. Um, and if you enjoyed it, um, come again tomorrow, same time. We're gonna do, uh, we're gonna draw a hedgehog. Um, yeah. So thanks again, and see you guys later.